Mace 360. Check out my video on how to do the steel mace 10 to 2. If you haven't done so already, it's a great way to get you to a place where you're ready to explore the 360. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into it today. So if you're familiar with the 10 to 2, you're going to be pretty well off in starting the 360. We're going to start with the mace at the wrapped position here. Remember, we want to keep our hands kind of right around your belly button level. We don't want to get in the habit of holding the mace up here. So for the steel mace 10 to 2, we remember that we're pulling it from side to side here. And a lot of the rules that we have for the 10 to 2 are going to apply to the 360. This is still going to travel parallel to my hips. okay? And I still want to make sure that as this goes over my shoulder, it's kind of going right in my pocket. I don't want to send this way backwards. It's going to swing and hit my leg. So keep those rules in mind. So for the 360, I'm going to go ahead and start with a couple 10 to 2s and then see how it transitions into the 360. And the main difference between the two is with the 360, we're just going to keep going in the same direction here. So between these movements, instead of going side to side, I'm going to pull my hands down across just like I would, and then I'm going to let the mace keep going to allow it to continue in that direction. Okay. As I said, all of the same rules of the 10 to 2 apply here. I'm still letting this travel very close to my back, all right? almost like I'm putting the bell in my back pocket as the bell is traveling parallel to my hips. Okay, all very important. Um, one of the biggest, uh, biggest habits that I see people who are learning 360 get into, the 360 is going to be more important for you to understand timing. Okay? You can, uh, timing is important with the 10 to 2, but with the 360, uh, I want to offer this tip here. What I often see is people start doing the 360, and just like with the 10 to 2, they allow that bell to tip, 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 and then their hands are catching up. And they go tip, 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 and then their hands are catching up. And they're in this constant state of trying to catch up with the bell. They can't, they can't sort of reground themselves. So the way that I teach to sort of avoid that is once you pull this over your shoulder and your hands come here, as that bell is right over your hands, I need to lead with my hands. This was a tip I offered with the 10 to 2. I want to lead with my hands. If I let the bell get way over here and my hands have not moved behind my head yet, I'm already too late. Okay, so as soon as the bell starts to cross my center line, my hands go behind my head. Hands go behind my head every time. So as you build comfort, confidence, and skill with this movement, you're gonna find you get a little bit smoother. And that's always our objective here. It's not necessarily to escalate in weight rapidly, but it's to build smoothness and consistency with our swings. So as this passes over, my hands go immediately behind my head, okay? And then I can change directions by stopping into a 10 to two. So I might pull it to one side and then do some 360s this way, pause on this side, 360 this way, you can sort of start to mix them up at that point, okay? But we want to be consistent with where we're placing our hands, where the bell is going when I send it over my shoulder, and the angle that it's swinging, so parallel to my hips. As long as you maintain an awareness of your timing right here, okay, and those other tips that I talked about, you should be good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to offer feedback or uh, 